Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. A very warm welcome to you all, both gathered here and at home, as we come to celebrate this special day in the life of our parish, the Feast of St Andrew, which happens to very happily, I think, coincide with the first day of the new church year, the first day of Advent, when we celebrate hopeful new beginnings and look to Christ coming to us. As we celebrate, then, we celebrate as the community of St Andrew together, looking forward in hope. It is also my very great pleasure to be welcoming the Reverend Dr Josephine Inkin from St Francis College to be our guest preacher today as we celebrate. John speaks of Christ as the true light coming into the world. In commemoration of that coming, we light candles for the four weeks leading to Christmas and reflect on the coming of Christ. It is significant that the church has always used the language, the coming of Christ, because it speaks to the deep truth. Christ is coming. Christ is always coming, always entering a troubled world, a wounded heart. And so we light the first candle, the candle of hope, and dare to express our longing for peace, for healing, and the well-being of creation. Loving God, as we enter this Advent season, we open all the dark places in our lives and memories to the healing light of Christ. Show us the creative power of hope. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Take time in the busyness of this season for quiet reflection. For the light of God's love is discernible everywhere. We will let ourselves be surprised by wonder and set aside time to offer quiet thanks. The good news of Advent is this. Christ is coming. Christ is always coming. We will welcome Christ into our hearts. We will let ourselves be guided by his ministry. We will go forth from this place in hope. The Lord comes, bringing to light things now hidden in darkness and disclosing the purposes of the heart. Let us open our hearts and prepare for his coming, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you your sins and keep you in life eternal. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Ever-living God, whose apostle St Andrew heard the call of your son and followed, bringing his brother with him, inspire us, like him, to offer ourselves readily for your service, 
and to tell others of the good news of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Deuteronomy 30, 11, 11 to 14. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Hear the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Romans. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all have obeyed the good news, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? 
So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. Hear the word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately. They left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. For the Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our source of true hope. Amen. First of all, thank you for your welcome. It's lovely to be in this beautiful church with such wonderful people. Um, and greetings from St. Francis College. On the back of the pew sheet, I see um, there's an advert for a fantastic little course that my colleagues, particularly Jonathan Sargent and Fiona Hammond, have put together. Um, and I do invite you to be part of that. But um, this is a little advert. You know, do check out what's happening at St. Francis College. Fantastic opportunities for study and a brilliant library, which anyone, can, you don't have to be on a course to to join and to check out if you're interested in exploring faith a bit more. It's one of those lovely quiz questions, isn't it? What does Barbados, Romania, the Ukraine and Scotland have in common? The answer is St Andrew, of course, our shared patron saint today. In this COVID-19 year, I think that is something particularly to wonder at and give thanks for. Because in recent years, as a world together, we've been divided, haven't we, into our little separate corners by border closures, and we've been united in suffering. So on this Advent Sunday, it's good to be reminded of our greater connections from the little worlds in which we each live, and particularly to be reminded, of course, the immense hope which all churches and all communities that honour St Andrew today, they all point, this universal hope, this amazing gift of love that we wait upon. For Andrew's witness is not least, I think, to the central importance of relationships, 
relationships with God in Jesus Christ, with one another and with others across our world. So as we celebrate the Feast of St Andrew today and Advent hope, we so need that, don't we, in 2020, it is to be invited into this amazing mission, this amazing sending love of God into which all of us are called and the joy which lies in such hope in our relationships beyond all the divisions and sufferings of our lives and world. So St Andrew today, should our hope help to empower us in the strength of this Advent hope to trust and find new life across our human borders and in the borderlands of suffering, despair, um, joy and hope. Borders and borderlands, what do they mean to you, I wonder? We've been particularly aware of them, haven't we, in Australia this year, within Australia itself. Not least, it's been personally painful for many of us, I think, to be cut off from loved ones, even in Australia, never mind across the world, and to experience others suffering and, in some cases, dying alone. So what a lovely signal of Advent it is, isn't it, that our own state borders will be fully open this Tuesday, the day after St. Andrew. It's a lovely gift of Advent to us, a lovely sign of hope. Yet so many across the world are struggling with much greater COVID-19 issues, including in many places where St. Andrew is the patron saint. And among ourselves, I would think, a lot of us are struggling in different sorts of borderlands. We're struggling for fresh hope, or we're waiting for fresh hope. Maybe we know it's coming, but it, it seems to be taking a while. Particularly where we experience suffering, resistance, and anxieties of various kinds. So part of the good news of today, of both Advent and St. Andrew, is that the border lands and the border times in which we exist are places where God is present and comes alive again. Now that hope and new life might happen a bit slowly and surprisingly, as with Andrew's encounter with Jesus on the shores of Lake Galilee long ago. It begins just with a couple, with just a couple of, in our story today, just a couple of brothers, doesn't it? Well, two sets of them and Zebedee. That's, that's just the beginning. But imagine, look at us today where we are, where the Christian church is... We don't know, just treasuring, being responsive to this hope and taking the first steps, we can make such a difference, not just for ourselves, but for generations to come. Because uh, Andrew is very much, I think, a saint of the borderlands and the border times. And you can see that when you delve a bit deeper into the text of the Bible itself. Because this brings us to the name Andrew, because names are very important in the Bible. Andrew's name is no exception and points us clearly to this hope that God has for borderlands and border times. Because Andrew is a Greek name, not as we might expect as somebody who's brought up in the same faith as Jesus, a Hebrew name. Andrew is a word that comes from the Greek word Andrea, which means manhood and valor. And that's highly significant because we have two brothers here, Andrew and Simon, and Simon's a Hebrew name. So therefore, we have both Greek and Jewish names in this one sibling family relationship. And in the Bible, really, when you have a name of anything, you have to look at it because it, you have to take it seriously because names, as I say, are so important. Simon, of course, Andrew's brother, is later renamed by Jesus as Peter, as the rock as it is in Greek. That's another story. But at the start of Matthew's account of the calling of this new community of hope, which will become the church, he's saying Jew and Greek we're finding together. Not just sort of the, the old religious group or the old in-group, but the others, the whole world, in other words. This church, this living expression and hope, is always to be Jew and Greek because there are no destructive borders ultimately in the love of God. And that's echoed in our reading from the epistle to the Romans too where St. Paul understands this as central to the gospel which like Andrew and St. Simon Peter he encourages us to share and live out. So he talks about 
neither Jew nor Greek. Physically, too, today's gospel reading also reminds us that the mission of God and the advent hope of Christ begins literally and symbolically in border country. Because Galilee as a region was at the very heart of human differences in Jesus' day. I would think, it, I don't know today, you might say it was sort of like northern New South Wales or something, you know, sort of like Tweed and Kulingata. There's also that sort of movement about. It was a tremendous mixing pot, anyway, in those days, of races and social, economic, cultural, and religious diversity. And that's why Andrew had a Greek name, because some Jewish people were given Jewish names, because there was this, this mix happening. So it was a place of great change and uncertainty. And it's also reflected this change in the fact that Andrew and Peter, we're told, uh, Simon, were born in a place called Bethsaida. That's where they grew up. And that was part of the Lake of Galilee. And that's where they fished. But then they moved to Capernaum. It said they shared a house there. In this dynamically growing, multicultural local city that is called Capernaum. So why did they do that? Have you ever wondered? Almost certainly it was related, as scholars say, to environmental change. Because what happened was the lake around Bethsaida started to silt up. And so it um, drew fishermen um, like Andrew to other places. They had to move nearer to Capernaum to ply their trade. To make such a living, however, just to add to the difficulties, was difficult because the Roman overlords at the time and their local uh, Jewish puppets exacted heavy taxes to pay for the new buildings and developments they were doing to build up their city. So what was happening at the time was that the rich were getting quite rich and building these things, and the poor were under a lot of pressure. Increasing numbers of people were quite insecure and anxious for their lives and families. So scholars today suggest that will be one reason why um, Andrew and his brother were drawn to the teaching and person of Jesus, because they were desperate for hope, not just eternal hope, that is an important part of it, but also they were desperate for hope for their people, their environment, and the future of their world. So can you see how, what a great story this is for our times, amazing story for our times, because in a way we live in a similar sort of situation, don't we? Andrew's story is not just a story of long ago that we can appreciate and to give us another church the chance for a patronal festival. Andrew's story is our story. This is good news for us because we have similar insecurities, don't we, and similar pressures in our own border times, as it were. You know, what is going to happen, say, if we get a vaccine? What sort of a world are we going to have? with all the changes, and how is that all going to work out? So it's very similar, this world, this hope that we hope for, both eternally, but also in the present too, right across our world. Because this is God's continuing story, ever-present story, this invitation to live and share another way of being together with God, with one another, and with our wider world, including our environment. And it means we have to live in this anxious time, doesn't it? It's a little bit to wait on God. But this story should give us hope and encouragement that even in our insecurities and our waiting border times, God is present and God will see us through. And there's something more to come in the love of God. One of the great things about St. Andrew, I think, is the way he calls us to a more balanced relationship with God too. Because Christian tradition sometimes can become so obsessed with um, certain features and certain disciples like Peter and Paul, who are very, very important in our Christian story, that sometimes we miss out the other aspects. Peter and Paul are vital figures, as I say, but they're only two of God's disciples. And Jesus continues to call more and more on different types of people, like the mix of people that we are here today. Because we're all needed, and that's what St. Paul is saying, we're all needed to follow Jesus like Andrew and share fresh hope with one another and our world. Now, as a child who was born in what was the ancient kingdom of Northumbria in Britain, that was a kingdom that, not the old Scottish-England divide that we have now, but which was a kingdom that began at the Humber about Hull, 
went up to Edinburgh. So it included sort of parts of Scotland, parts of England. As a child of that area, I like the way that Andrew was adopted by the northern Celts, that's the people who became the Scots, as their patron saint. Because at the 7th century Synod of Whitby, which is a very, very important date in the development of what we now know as the Anglican Church, the indigenous British Celtic Christian traditions were largely swept away and superseded by the Roman ones, the ones from the Christians, you know, based in Rome. And their great saint was Peter. So Peter became important in that area, in Northumbria, and they sort of sidelined Columba, who was the great missionary saint of Celtic Christianity, an Irishman who went to Scotland and then brought, helped his people brought the faith to northern England. So in taking Andrew as their patron saint, I think what the Scots did was to insist that the church of Peter shouldn't have the whole say, that there was other aspects uh, to the faith. Just as, you know, today, if, if you're an English person, you say something about Britain, you, you know, you've got to make quite sure, because the Scots have got something else to say. You know, there's, we each have to contribute. Because the hope and mission of God involves us all. It calls for Greek and Jew, or if you were in Britain, Scots and English, and the Welsh and the Irish. As St. Paul went on to say, female and male, slave and free. All types of people from all kinds of borders are needed for God's hope and mission. Because we're all intimately related, just as much as the siblings Andrew and Simon. Isn't it amazing? They call family, and always in twos. You know how Jesus sent people out in twos? Uh, partly for protection and support and all that. We're not meant to go alone as Christians. We're meant to go in twos and threes and such like because that is the way that Jesus calls us as people who relate together, not as individual special people because God loves us all equally and needs us all to support one another and use our various gifts. One more thing I want to say about the history of Andrew in the church. Andrew is, of course, what the Orthodox Christians call protokletos. Uh, proto Fancy Greek name, isn't it? It means first called. Because as John's Gospel indicates, Andrew is the first to be called by jo Jesus, the first to bring new hope, the first to respond to the mission of God. And it's he who then brings his brother Simon to Jesus in John's Gospel. So what, like the Celtic Christians, what the Orthodox tradition is saying is that Andrew is very special as the first called person, not just in himself, but to highlight that God's mission is about each and every one of us, not just special select figures. The point isn't to work out who's important in God's work of salvation. It is to encourage us all at Advent and the Feast of St. Andrew to make our own response and to share in relationship with one another. So to summarize, back to what St. Paul was saying in that second reading, three things I think to take away from this uh, feast today, highlighted by St. Paul. Firstly, it's not just a story about Andrew in the past, it's about us. We're called afresh to hear that God in Jesus. Christ is with us today just as he was with Andrew and his brother and companions. So the question is, do we see Christ among us today in our borderlands, in our sort of change over times as we wait for a vaccine and all that sort of stuff? Where is God present for us? What is God asking us to do? That first step in our lives, wherever we are in our borderlands, God is with us. That's the first thing. Secondly then, having listen, to try and discern where God is amongst us. How will we respond to God? Andrew and his companions, you can imagine, I mean, they were fishermen. They, they weren't expecting to become, you know, followers of Jesus and evangelists and take all those risks. They didn't know where Jesus was going to take them. So they might have struggled themselves to leave their comfort spaces and trust the new hope Jesus was offering. But they did take that step, and so they encourage us to follow Jesus today. So what might God be asking us to do as individuals and as a church together? What are the things, it might just be a small step, that we might want to take this Advent and in the coming year. Then thirdly, 
after seeing God afresh, coming to us like Jesus came afresh to the disciples and responding, let's remember that we're to share this amazing hope and knowledge of the presence of God with us. Because this is for others too. We, unlike Andrew, may not travel far to share the gospel in far off lands. I mean, in Georgia and other places, they say that's where Andrew preached. We don't know. But I suspect that he did travel a long way until he was martyred. And of course, we can't travel very far at all, can we, at the moment, <laughs> from Australia. But most of us aren't going to be, hopefully we aren't going to be martyred either. But each of us is encouraged to share in the ways we can this hope and this love. For this Feast of St. Andrew reminds us that Advent hope is for us all and needs us all. In the name of Christ, in whom there is neither Jew nor Greek. Amen. Let us stand as we are able and together affirm the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Advent is a time of watching, waiting, reflecting, and preparing for the coming of our Saviour. Rejoice and be glad for the Holy One of Israel will come among us soon. We pray for the people of the world. We pray for all who suffer from the dangers of war and unrest, especially Syria, Sudan and Afghanistan. Creator God, drive away despair from our politics, revive our dreams of justice and truth and restore our passion for what is good and right. Establish your just and gentle rule throughout the world, especially where there is conflict, where peace seems so far away. Govern the hearts and minds of all world leaders and those in authority that they may act justly, honestly and according to your will, especially at this time of the global pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the hungry and for those who cannot feed their children. Teach us to justly share the resources of the earth that we may live in harmony with your creation and at peace with one another. Help us to appreciate the beauty of the earth and all it provides. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for this nation, for the diversity of people for whom Australia is home. Come to us and bring reconciliation and justice to all who live here. We pray for the Indigenous people of this country who have been made outsiders in their own land. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for Sue, Mervyn and Howard, and for Anne, who is being ordained on Saturday the 5th of December. We pray for our parish community and for all whom we hold dear. We pray for a spirit of welcome and hospitality in our parish community. We pray for all those mentioned on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, We pray for those for whom this day will be long and painful, for those in hospital or ill at home, those struggling with despair or depression, and for all those who care for them. Comfort and heal all who suffer, especially at this time of COVID. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are marginalised or neglected, for the frail, the vulnerable, and those who are not valued. We pray for our friends and for our families. We pray for all whom we are separated from by bitterness, jealousy, or resentment. Help us to do your will, to love one another as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. We give thanks to St Andrew on his feast day and pray to be followers of Jesus. We give you thanks, our Lord Jesus, for you bring your people from death to everlasting life. We remember all who have died in the faith. We give thanks for those of this parish who have gone before us and all whom we have loved. Help us to follow you in life and at our death raise us up with your sisters and brothers of every age that we may enter into your eternal presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Please join us as we sing the summons. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings to your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Give thanks to the Lord our God. Oh, glory and honor be yours, always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever living God, we give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ who by the power of your spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks because you have called us into the fellowship of Andrew and all your saints and set before us the example of their witness and the fruit of your spirit in their lives. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great 
and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was handed over, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Great is the mystery of faith. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains, which has been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. moment I will invite you forward to receive communion in one kind. Simply wait until there's a cross available in the, aisle, in the centre aisle and then move and, and the sanitizer is available for use before you receive. If you would like to come forward for a blessing instead of communion, simply place your hands behind your back and I will know that is what you seek. The gifts of God for the people of God. 
Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ. Remember that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This is the Lord's table. All who seek God's mercy are welcome here. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. God, the source of all holiness, may we who have shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims on earth be welcomed with St. Andrew and all your saints to the heavenly feast in your kingdom. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Please make yourself comfortable for a few announcements. Have we any special celebrations this week? I have one, clearly. I'm getting a lot of mileage out of that joke, can I just say? I think I've done that three times this week. Oh, of course, we remembered that last night. Jared, do you want to pop your head out so we can wish you a happy birthday? You might be busy doing the sound, so thank you. <laughs> oh, and yes, it's Alison Arkell's birthday as well. Hello, happy birthday, Jared. <laughs> and Alison, nice to see you both. Uh, for the people at home, this is... No longer middle-aged, officially. Goodness me. <laughs> Enjoy your celebrations today. How wonderful. Uh, first announcement, we have an Advent study using the wonderful materials that Joe was telling you about from the college. Uh, you can zoom in, watch a simple video, well, not a simple video, watch a video, and then discuss it afterwards. So no prep work required. It's a wonderful way to study together. Uh, so uh, that, they're on Thursdays at 10... 30 in the, 10 o'clock in the mornings, yep. Uh, we also have a new website with many thanks to Catherine Munro who's been diligently working on that with Tim. Uh, so thank you to you both. It looks fresh and ready for our new liturgical year. So how lovely is that? And as part of that, this Advent, we have an online Advent calendar. And each day there'll be a grand reveal this uh, little special video for you. So if you have grandchildren or other family and you would like to walk Advent together, even if you're not together, you can access the same videos and talk about it afterwards. Um, th there are, it's on our website, so you can find it there. As part of this, Jenny and I have been busy making candles. So there are Advent sets, candles with uh, the four purple candles, or the three purple candles, a pink one and a white one. And if you look under our table on your way out, please do feel free to uh, grab a bag of candles so that you can join the Advent journey with us. And you can pass them on if you like as well. Sue and I are taking a bit of leave this week. I am on retreat uh, and I'm looking forward to that. I'm a bit too happy about that, aren't I? <laughs> uh, and Sue will be um, on some family leave. If you need us between Wednesday and Friday when we are both on leave, Sue is available for urgent pastoral matters. Otherwise, Tim will help you in the office. And I think I have covered the notices. Uh, thread together. Oh, no, I haven't. Mm -hmm. Thread together. Our thread together training is on Tuesday here in the church at 9.30. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Thank you. And we hope you will join us afterwards for a cup of tea or coffee. A very big welcome to you if you are visiting with us today. We'd love to have a chance to get to know you afterwards over a cuppa. And now we get to sing um, my absolute favourite hymn, Dear Father, Lord of Humankind.
And now may God give you the grace to follow St Andrew and all the saints in faith and hope and love. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.